People keep asking me the same thing. How do I make my Warriors games look this good? If you've ever played Dynasty Warriors or Samurai Warriors, you know the struggle. Washed out colors, lurid textures and older titles that can be pretty rough on the eyes. But with a little help from Reshade, I have completely transformed the way these games look. With just a few tweaks, they look sharper, more colorful and way more modern. Plus you can even give them the cell shaded look that Samurai Warriors 5 went for. So in this video I will show you exactly how I did it, step by step, so you can bring your games to life too. Before we start, here is a fair warning. Everything I'm about to show uses a third party program. So this only works on PC. Console players are unfortunately out of luck. I'm speaking about Reshade. This program is completely free and safe to use. And if you don't go overboard with the effects, you generally won't feel any performance hit. Also keep in mind that I built these presets on my own monitor with its own color profile. Your results might look different depending on your display or if you're watching on a phone. It also matters whether you have left your monitor and PC at their standard settings or already tweaked brightness, contrast, gamma and vibrance or if you are using something like a blue light filter. With that out of the way, let me show you how to install Reshade for different warrior titles and how to make your own preset or use mine. First, go to reshade.me and download the latest installer. The program is updated frequently. You can still use older versions, just the main difference is that the newer builds include more effects that were added later on. Also occasionally a new version can introduce a bug that crashes your game. For example, I am currently running the 6.4.1 version because I had crash issues with the 6.5.1. If you want to download an older version, it's easy. Just use this format and replace the axis with the number of the version you want. Then save the file anywhere you like on your PC. When the download finishes, open the installer and find the game you want to target. Some of your games may appear in the list already. But there is a good chance the ones you need won't show up. If that happens, open your Steam library, right click the game and choose Browse Local Files. Now copy that path, go back to the Reshade application, click Browse and paste the path at the top. Now you can select the game's executable. Most titles only have one EXE. If there are multiple, then you have to choose the correct one for your language or edition. For Dynasty Warrior 7 in English for example, you want the sm6en.exe. Or for Dynasty Warriors 8, you want to use the launch file instead of the config one. Next choose the rendering API the game uses. Older Warrior titles usually run on DirectX 9, while newer ones use the DirectX 10, 11, 12. So use DirectX 9 for Dynasty Warrior 7 and Dynasty Warriors 8 and use DirectX 10, 11, 12 for Dynasty Warriors 9, Dynasty Warriors Origin, Samurai Warriors 4 and 5 and Warriors Orochi 3 and 4. After that, pick which effect packs to install. Besides the standard effects, I also grab Sweet FX, FX Shaders, Reshade Shaders, Quint, Color Effects, Insane Shaders, Astray FX, and G Shade. We won't be using most of the effects inside these packs, but anything you don't toggle on won't affect performance, so it's safe to install them. The only exception that I found out is Dynasty Warriors 8. If you install too many packs on this game, it will crash when you launch it. So if you encounter this problem, you can skip the last or the last two effect packs. Then click next and let everything download and install. When it finishes, close the installer and launch the game. If everything went correctly, a small window will pop up to confirm that Reshade was installed successfully. Now by default, you open the Reshade menu with the home key. But if you are on a laptop or a keyboard without a home key and the menu won't open, then you can change this in the settings file. Go back to the game's install folder, open the Reshade ini in a text editor like Notepad, scroll to the input section and find the line key overlay followed by a number. 
you can look up the key code you want to use on any online key code reference. Now just replace the number with your new key's code. For example, 36 is the home key and 56 is the number 8 key. Now save the reshade ini, relaunch the game and the new key will open the reshade menu. When the menu appears, reshade shows you a short tutorial that you can safely skip. There are only a few things you really need to know. First, go to the settings tab and assign an effect toggle key so you can instantly compare before and after. Then go back to the home tab to pick your effects. Before you enable anything, create a new preset by clicking the plus icon and name it whatever you like. Something like Muso preset 1 works fine. Also a good thing to know is that you can resize the reshade window and change the position of it on your screen. Plus you can also change the size of the tab down here, which will help you to have a better oversight over all of the toggled effects. To find the effects you want, you can utilize the search bar up here. I like to start with the contrast brightness saturation effect because it lets you dial in the most important base settings. I would begin by adjusting either exposure or brightness, so you get a clearer picture. You will probably revisit this after you add more filters, since some of them can make the game look darker. Then Vibrance is one of the most important sliders for Warriors games, because it brings life to those dull colors. If Vibrance alone isn't enough, you can nudge the saturation a bit, Avoid touching contrast for now. While contrast can help clean up the image, we have better tools for that. And it's wiser to tweak it after your other effects are in place. There are also a lot of additional options in this effects pack. So feel free to experiment. And remember that you can quickly reset the slider with a right click or by hitting the reset icon. One very useful trick here is adjusting the saturation of specific color ranges. Depending on the game, vibrance and saturation can push certain hues, like reds, too far. So those color controls help you to find the sweet spot. After that, I like to use the bonus LUT pack, which lets you apply cinematic color overlays to your image. There are 50 looks available. And the best choice depends on your own taste and on the game's color scheme. Once you pick one, I would dial back the overall intensity as well as the chroma and luma controls. At full strength, these LUTs can be overwhelming, so a subtler blend usually looks better. You can optionally add CineTools LUT on top of that. It isn't required, but stacking a second LUT can create unique combinations you could never reach with basic color sliders. Again, I would avoid maxing the intensity, and remember that the ideal choice depends on the game you are playing and your own taste. Next up are what I call pop filters. The first is unsharp. This helps remove the foggy white cast you often see on distant objects. You will need to find the sweet spot because it darkens both faraway elements and nearby surfaces like the ground. Although it usually leaves your character less affected, which is good. After Unsharp, try Clarity 1 and Clarity 2. These also add a gentle pop, particularly in the shadows. I think the default settings here are decent, but you of course can still fine tune it to your taste. Dehaze is another strong option. Turning it on can feel like you have just installed an upgraded texture pack. It brings out a ton of details and it helps to further clear that distant foggy look many of the games have. Be careful though to not overdo it, or the image can become really harsh on the eyes. Now take a look at curves, levels and HDR. All three affect the black and white range in slightly different ways, which can make the image pop again, but they can also wreck the sky if you push them too far, sometimes blowing it out so much that you can't even recognize the clouds. Also don't enable all of them at once. I am mentioning all three, so you know what to test and tweak. And since we installed several effect packs, you will find multiple versions of curves, levels and HDR. So just search for the name at the top and pick the one you prefer. DPX is another handy tool 
for a touch more pop and some color adjustments. It's not strictly necessary, because you can do similar things with the contrast brightness saturation effect, but DPX is nice when you want to layer adjustments on top of your base grade. And depending on the situation, you can easily just turn it on and off. For sharpening, pick any sharpen effect you like and tune it until fine details on characters and the environment become clearer. Just don't crank it too high or the image will look overly crisp and uncomfortable. I recommend pairing sharpening with FXAA, which is anti-aliasing. FXAA smooths out the harshness from sharpening while keeping the extra details you have just added. The comic effect is a fun one. With the right settings, it draws subtle outlines on characters and the environment to create a comic book look similar to Samurai Warriors 5. I love this art style because it helps the game to age more gracefully. You can just copy the settings I use, because if you push this effect too far, the outlines get thick and appear everywhere, which looks especially bad in foliage heavy games like Dynasty Warriors 9. Keep it low so the effect is more visible on your character and nearby objects. MXAO is the last effect I will mention here and it can be a huge visual upgrade when it's supported. It adds ambient occlusion, shadows where there weren't any. So scenes look much more grounded and impressive. Shadows are expensive though, so set MXAO to low or very low, unless you have performance to spare. Otherwise the FPS hit will be noticeable. If MXAO doesn't work in your game, or it makes your characters look very dark and messed up, then you can adjust a few settings and see if it works. First, go to the reshade depth input is reversed setting in the preprocessor definitions in your home tab and set it to zero. Or you can adjust the depth settings in the add ons tab. Now, at this point, you can tweak everything to your taste. If you forgot to create a dedicated preset at the start, don't worry. You can go into your game files, copy the base preset that was created during setup, paste it somewhere else, rename it and use it as its own preset. After you install the same effect packs in other games, you can copy and paste this preset into the games folder. When you launch the game, simply switch to the preset up here to load all of your previous settings. If you would like a different preset per title, adjust the settings for that game and then rename the preset file to something descriptive, like Dynasty Warriors 8 preset, so you always know which one belongs where. Once you are happy with the look, go down here in Reshade and enable Performance Mode. This locks in your choices and helps minimize the impact of the effects on your performance. And that's pretty much it for my Reshade guide for the Warriors games. I really hope this helped you to get your setup running and gave you some ideas to make the graphics look way fresher and more modern. If you run into any problems or have questions, just drop them in the comments and I will try to help you out. Otherwise, go enjoy your games with the new updated look. They honestly feel like a completely different experience once you see them with the right tweaks. So thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next one.